welcome to your interview so how have you been great great thanks how about you awesome really uh, so this is your system design round and you'll be given a problem statement where you'd have to come up with an end to end architecture and a high level flow to solve that problem but there will also be some of the components uh, where i would specifically ask you to do a low level deep dive as well wait isn't this an entry level job yes it is but it's also an experienced level job so it's like experienced entry level job yes that's it so experience is implied okay uh you'll be given you know a lot of responsibilities in terms of uh, your role that usually comes up with an experienced hire so your career will grow on a very fast track but there will be also some of the things that you'll be expected to have at an entry level for example your independence to work on a module or your pay but but we have we have free food so isn't that great okay so will i have to do system design on a day to day basis no 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 so we have a team of senior folks who do that uh, you'll only be helping them a little uh, but 3 4 years down the line you'll be creating your own system design after you get promoted obviously oh so shouldn't i be giving the system design around 3 4 years down the line <laughs> yeah you you're funny i give you that uh, we love to have that in our team it lifts our spirit it's great awesome so let's get started with your interview uh, design a big data pipeline that solves hi everyone as usual this is judge for those of you who don't know i'm a data engineer working with google and i've already dropped a couple of videos about google interview process and how to create the perfect resume so you can get selected in companies like google if you haven't checked it out yet i definitely doing that i'm going to link it in the description uh, so for now we are going to talk about system design after those videos as i said i i received a lot of requests on uh, questions like how do you prepare for system design and how do you perfectly tackle it in your interviews so here we are unfortunately i've seen a lot of people getting through uh, getting at least until the system design round and uh, then rejected at that round and which which really sucks because by that time you have already cleared two to four rounds of interview and you're really hoping that things go well so system design is usually this last hurdle that some people uh, you know find it difficult to cross and especially in a role where you are a senior engineer or higher this is going to be exponentially harder in that introductory moment i really wasn't targeting any one company in particular it was just a way to representing that even if you are a fresher you should expect system design questions so in this video i'm going to cover two types of system design question one we are going to design not an application but a small part of an application and then second we are going to capture data from that small part of an application and then create a data pipeline if you are a data engineer it's possible that in some of the interviews you might be asked only about the data pipeline question which is the second part of this video so feel free to jump to that section but application system design is usually common for many roles like sdes sves or data engineers as well So before you skip to the second part of the video I definitely recommend going through the first part as well. This video alone is not going to be enough for you to clear system design. I'm going to share uh, many resources in the description section below. There's there's going to be a book, there's going to be a couple of websites, uh, so some very crucial tips that I'm going to reveal by the end of this video. So stick around. All right, so let's get started with the first question. We have to create for example a shopping cart for your website. and system design questions are usually this vague that they don't really have a lot of information and that's the tricky part that you have to ask correct questions in order to get those information and then using that information you're going to create your design All right so first question i would ask in something like this is uh, what is going to be the user count what is going to be the active user count so let's say i got an answer like we have 500000 users and out of them 100000 are usually active now this is a very big number in order to handle a system that that uh, can take inputs from 100000 different users at the same time you need to ensure that your system is scalable then you can also ask questions like are there any traffic spikes expected in certain uh, period of the month or year then let's say the interviewer says that uh, once a month we we design this sale and then we have about 300000 users online now the take away from this question is that we should be able to handle uncertain traffic load during the let like, weekend or uh, during the sale as well third question is a 
question that I would ask myself and this is is this design stateless or stateful so stateless is something that you know goes away when you refresh it's the simplest explanation for it and stateful is has a particular state at a particular time and even when you refresh it doesn't go away now imagine a scenario of a cart we really don't want the contents of cart to be lost whenever we refresh the page so this is definitely a stateful application after this, I would ask a question about what is going to be the region of this uh, website? Is this going to be a multi-region website where uh, there are different users from different regions, for example, US, Europe and Asia Pacific, things like that, right? So accordingly, we'll have to design our system and make sure that we are also complying to different uh, data governance and data monitoring protocols of these different regions. So let's say uh, our takeaway is that this entire system has to be hosted on three different regions EU, US and APAC. After this, uh, the next question I would ask is, is this going to be on-prem or is this going to be on cloud? And if it's going to be on cloud, have we decided a cloud vendor yet? Now, in, if your interviewer is okay with you answering this question in any one of the cloud vendors, they would generally say they haven't decided the cloud vendor. So you can pick either AWS, Azure, GCP or whatever cloud that you're comfortable with. All right, so now we have asked a lot of questions. All we have to do is start designing. For our shopping cart i've created this type of uh, an architecture diagram in my system design round so when you look at it from left and right here you can see that the user is connected to the client you know using their own pc or laptop or any other device for that matter so cloud dns is used here so cloud dns is nothing but your dns resolver service so let's say you have your application hosted on a particular ip but you wouldn't want your users to uh, type in that IP you just would want them to type in an address and that would eventually route to the backend IP of your application so for that cloud DNS is used we have used Google cloud here as our vendor so once cloud DNS resolves our DNS then we can uh, see that the application is directly hitting the load balancer so now this load balancer what it does is it balances the load between different machines that it is connected to in the backend so here in the backend we can see we have a vpc here which is a private cloud inside our gcp network and uh, we have an auto scaling group here so what an auto scaling group means is that you have not one machine two machine or three machines but it can scale up or scale down according to how many requests are coming from the user side so here we have an auto scaling uh, group i would say that would scale up and scale down different compute engine compute engine is nothing but like a virtual machine where our application code is hosted so load balancer will ensure that uh, not one compute and not one or two compute engines are overloaded so it will ensure that it is redirecting requests correctly without loading any one of the compute engines too much so because of this load balancer it can automatically handle on the if you can see on the left hand side we had asked these questions and we had you know taken some takeaways so it can automatically handle uncertain spikes so that is handled here it is also scalable because we are using auto scaling here next thing if you see uh, we are storing user data on cloud sql so let's say user comes in and order something from their cart we would need to know what is their address and everything contact number so all of these information will be stored in cloud sql all right but what this architecture does not have is that one thing it's not multi-region the application that we are creating is supposed to serve in us eu and apac region also there is no caching mechanism so let's say as a user you added uh, 10 things in your cart and then you refresh your page or refresh your application and then all of those things are lost it's very frustrating right because we have no caching mechanism here so let's see how we can improve this architecture so for handling caching uh, for our refreshing cart we have three options first thing it's called enable session stickiness what this means is that one client IP will go to one virtual machine in the backend. So for example, let's say in our previous slide, I'm a, I'm a client, I, I'm with client IP X, it will only go to compute engine one. If there's somebody has a client IP Y, it would only go to compute engine two. But you only have so many compute engines, right? And clients will be too many. 
So it can overload one virtual machine and it's not scalable. Then another option is to send cart content in cookies. But this again is not very scalable because HTTP requests will now be heavy. And cookies also have security risk. What if your application's HTTP requests are hacked in the middle? Everyone will be able to see what a user has purchased. So there is also security concern. Third option is the best option. We can use Redis caching. So this is like, imagine a database, but hosted in your cache. Cache is like a super fast memory store. So we have no problem here apart from having to manage obviously an extra component and it will also have its separate cost. But that is the best thing to do here. So now after this consideration, this is my second iteration of the system design. So here you can see on the left hand side, everything remains the same. I have added a VPC router here because I wanted to create a multi-region system. So for example, you can see we have two regions, US West one, EU West one. You can have n number of regions like this. So there are the, the first load balancer is the public load balancer. Everyone can hit it and then it goes to VPC router and it will route the traffic to their correct regions. If a user is logging in from US West one, it will go here and same thing for EU. Now, once it is in, inside a region, you can see both the regions have similar architecture diagram. Now, let's say UI is hosted on a separate virtual machine and your backend is hosted on a different virtual machine. This is a best practice because by decoupling your UI and backend, you are ensuring that you have both. Uh, you, you have your backend scalable uh, and decoupled from UI. So you can see over here that after UI, your request will go to the cloud load balancer. This is your internal load balancer. Uh, it will, the your request will go to one of these virtual machines and your internal load balancer will decide that. Then no changes here in the auto scaling group. On the right hand side, you can see we have added a memory store. So this is the Redis cluster uh, or the Redis uh, database that we were talking about to handle cache. Now that we are done with that little shopping cart design, coming to our next question is we have to create a data pipeline that captures data from the application that we just created and it processes it and also uh, runs some machine learning recommendations on it. So this is a typical data engineering system design question. Now let's get started. So first question I would ask is what are going to be the data source of my pipeline? Now the data source in this case is going to be the MySQL table that we have created where we are storing user data and also capturing uh, the information whether a user has ordered something or not. Then uh, next question I would ask is, is this a batch processing pipeline or is it a live uh, streaming pipeline? So let's say my answer is batch processing. Then third question in my data pipeline would be uh, what is going to be the frequency of this pipeline? So let's say I get an answer like you have to run this monthly. Okay, now we need more estimation about the data size. So I would ask that what is going to be the general data size per run? Let's say there are 15 different tables and each of them having one GB of data stored every day. Now you want to run this pipeline on a monthly basis. That means on an average, we have around 450 GB of data that we have to process every month. Then my next question would be, is there already a system in place for this? Uh, because most of the data pipeline questions are something that's already present in an on-premise system, but you have to implement the same thing in cloud or you have to optimize it. So just for the clarification, I would ask this question as well. So let's say the answer I got was yes, we have a Spark based system already in present, but that is on-premise, we want to move to cloud. All right, so now we are good with all the questions. Oh, there's one more question that I would ask is that whom are we going to expose the final products to? Let's say we have three different users. First one is going to be the business analyst who are going to come in and write SQL queries on our data and uh, then do some visualizations and then finally export those dashboards. Second type of user is data scientist who would come in and run the machine learning recommendation model for that particular user. If the user orders X, then uh, what should we recommend them next? And the third user is going to be the operational user who are going to be responsible for running this pipeline end to end. So let's say we have you know now asked all the questions. Now let's just jump into creating this data pipeline. So on the left hand side, we can see that our data is coming from database as a source. So this again was one of the questions that we had asked. So we are taking in, let's say CSV file, extracted from our database and we are putting it into a GCS. So GCS is nothing but the Google Cloud Storage, which is a completely scalable storage hosted on Google Cloud. So we don't have to worry about scaling it or anything. We can just keep putting our objects here. 
so this is acting as our landing area so landing area is where from different data sources you just bring it together on one single data source once that is done we are using spark based processing platform here this again was one of the questions that we had asked and answer was that uh, there there is an existing system on prem and they are using spark based workflow there so in order to keep that part similar we are using spark based processing platform even on gcp it's called gcp data proc here is where you can run your spark workloads easily so here you'll apply different transformation rules like joins aggregate what not you'll apply dqm things like that and uh, after running your spark job you will store it in the gcs again so once your data is stored into gcs now one uh, one of the takeaways you can see on the left hand side is sql right so we had a take takeaway that bi users or analysts should be able to just directly query sql so for that we are storing our gcs data into bigquery bigquery is a data warehouse uh, hosted on google cloud it also provides a lot of analytical features and it's very scalable and almost serverless this will take care of our uh, sql part now we are also integrating a looker dashboard from this bigquery so every time we can either create a live connection or a batch connection depending on what is the requirement but looker can directly connect to bigquery and we can create our good looking dashboards here we also had data scientists coming in and uh, running their machine learning workflows on our final data so you can see something we can use something like google cloud data lab which allows you to write your python or r code and train your machine learning models and also operationalize it we have different services for this we can also use auto ml on google cloud so the what what service you use here it's uh, your personal preference so your interviewer may question why did you choose this particular service for that you should have an answer so one of the takeaway was we should have operational users looking at the pipeline triggering it and monitoring it so for that we'll use cloud composer which is google managed airflow service airflow is nothing but uh, an orchestration tool you can learn more about it by clicking the link in the description we are using python code here to act as a trigger inside our apache airflow we also have a cloud sql so this cloud sql will host any configuration or logging tables that we end up creating we'll also use stack driver which will be used across all the platform to collect logs there can be multiple options of creating a data pipeline you can orchestrate it on cloud composer you could have done it on dataflow you could have done it on something like talent by creating your own virtual machine and hosting talent directly on it so there are like multiple n number of ways to do this uh, you basically have to explain why the choices you made were correct ones and for that you can use any assumption that you want something like this can also be a system design question so how do you go on about preparing this like there are hundreds of uh, possible scenarios about every question right so i'm going to link some of the resources in the description below i would definitely recommend going to website uh, systemexpert.io i am also going to link a free book pdf in the description that can be super helpful but uh, in general uh, system design is not just about reading all these resources or going through them it's also about getting your hands on in one of the cloud platforms if possible if you don't have experience then i would definitely recommend going through one of the certifications for example on aws side it can be solutions architect these types of solutions architect certifications will give you a lot of idea about different services and how they can be used at a very high level so that you can pick and choose which ones to tinker in your system design questions this was one special thing that i wanted to show you if you go to for example cloud.google.com slash architecture you will find a lot of reference architecture for example i want to see reference architecture for big data and analytics building pipeline for data analytics and machine learning i can just click on learn more and this will show me a reference architecture that how you can create a machine learning pipeline. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions about next video, feel free to drop them in comment section. I would love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, that's it from my side. See you next time.